Recognising loneliness. Loneliness is a complex human emotion unique to all of us. There is no one cause to loneliness or feeling lonely. Due to this, there is not one way to combat it either. Our experiences will vary hugely, so it can be really tough to work out how we can help ourselves. Someone who, is ha who has a lot of friends but feels unheard and misunderstood will experience loneliness very differently from someone who has moved to a new area and is missing their normal support network. It is thought that loneliness is not necessarily being alone, but when we feel lonely, it affects our state of mind, which in turn affects how we connect with others. Causes of loneliness. As we said before, loneliness is unique to everyone, so there is no one cause. However, it has been found that certain life events and experiences could make you more susceptible to feeling lonely. Experiencing a bereavement, going through a relationship breakup, retiring and losing the social contact you had at work, changing jobs and feeling isolated from your co-workers, starting at university, moving to a new area or country without family, friends or community networks. In terms of this group or cohort of university students, it is likely that you have experienced more than one of these major life events in the last two to three years, leaving you all more vulnerable to the isolating and overwhelming feelings of loneliness. What loneliness looks like. Sometimes we know we feel rubbish or down, but can't work out why. I wanted to look now at some of the ways loneliness can affect us, both physically and emotionally. The aim of this section is to encourage you to become more connected with your experiences and understand what your body is trying to tell you. Ultimately, feeling lonely is the same as feeling hungry or sad. It is your body's way of telling you it needs something. Psychological symptoms are depression, anxiety, forgetfulness, aggression, brain fog. In extreme circumstances, loneliness can lead to hallucinations. A study on isolated lab rats found that there were physical changes in the brain, the amygdala, which is the part of the brain associated with stress. Physical symptoms, decreased energy, insomnia, interrupted sleep, decreasing appetite, increased tendency to become unwell or sick, body aches and pains. Feelings associated with isolation, self-doubt, worthlessness, anxiousness, restlessness, hopelessness. Behavioural changes, increased use of substances, retail therapy starts skyrockets, binge watching movies and TV shows, Craving warmth, hot drinks, baths, cosy clothes, etc. Saying no when invited to other places. Not answering calls as often. If we focus now on the idea that loneliness is a state of mind, we must assume that we can alter that state of mind, retrain ourselves to think and feel in alternative ways. Our state of mind can be affected by a number of factors. The biggest and toughest one of them all is our thoughts. Personal to us, strong in their convictions and always with us. So how do we work with our thoughts to give us a better chance of feeling okay? Getting through our periods of loneliness. Now I'd like you to try something with you now. After the count of three, I would like you to not, and I'm saying not, think about chocolate cake. Do not think about chocolate cake. In fact, do not think about any cake. Cake is off limits. One, two, three. Remember, don't think about cake. How did you all find that? Was it easy not to think? To shut off one of the loudest, most persistent parts of ourselves? If you experienced that activity, anything like me, then all I could think about was cake. You often hear people say, just don't think about it, concentrate on something else. When what we want to, not to think about something, it seems to take more of a hold. As I said before, this is your body's way of trying to communicate with you. Ignoring it will only make it worse. So what can we do? Cognitive behavioural therapy is a form of therapy which notices the connection between our unhelpful thinking patterns and the knock-on effect 
this has to our feelings and then our behaviours. Within these thinking patterns, there are what are known as NATs, negative automatic thoughts. We do not control these. They sweep into our mind and we accept them as our own, but we do not have to do this. If we can identify our unhelpful ways of thinking, we can challenge them rather than accepting them as truth. This slide highlights the main unhelpful thinking patterns. We will touch on each, giving examples of how they might look in relation to isolation. At the same time, I'd like you to notice any that you think belong to you. Write down your negative automatic thoughts. All or nothing thinking, black and white thinking. I have nobody at all. I will never feel any better. This will never end. I am worthless because I feel like this. Overgeneralizing. I felt like this before. I will always feel like this now. I lost someone close to me. This will happen again. They all look happy. Everyone else is coping okay. Mental filter. Being unable to see that other people are experiencing similar to you, only focusing on your hurt. Focusing on the negative interactions you have had and disregarding the positive ones. Disqualifying the positive. I know they called me, but it just doesn't make me feel any better. They're only doing it because they feel bad for me. They've asked me to join the research group, but it's probably because they couldn't find anyone else. Shoulds, musts. I should be enjoying myself. I'm at uni. I should have loads of friends. I shouldn't feel lonely. Feeling lonely happens to the elderly. It shouldn't happen to me. I should be using this time to do something amazing, but I'm not. Labelling. I'm rubbish friends. They are careless. I'm useless. Personalisation. I shouldn't have come to university. If I haven't, I'll be okay now. This is my parents' fault. They pushed me to come here. If my friends at home were nicer, they would make me feel better. I know my other friend is lonely. That must be my fault. I just can't connect. We learned in our last video, Your Brain on Social Distancing, that we're not built to be alone, and that the longer we feel lonely, the more our bodies start to break down mentally, emotionally, and physically. Whether you're social distancing all by yourself or with a partner or family members, the COVID-19 pandemic has surely made your social interactions much fewer. Whatever your situation is, it's totally understandable to feel lonely. We feel it too. Here are three tactics to help you in the fight against loneliness. One, recognize your loneliness for what it is. Loneliness, like hunger or thirst, is a natural way for your body to tell you it needs something. Connection. You are not sensitive or weak. You're a human, a social creature. So take your feelings of loneliness seriously and objectively, just like you would for feelings of hunger or thirst. Two, be vulnerable with at least one person. Pick someone who you can confide in and who can confide in you. Connect regularly via video calls or over the phone. It can be scary to talk about your feelings, but you'll both find that it's a great remedy for loneliness. Three, be part of something bigger than yourself. Participating in greater society is critical for feeling connected. Thanks to technology, you can connect to something bigger without leaving your home. Consider finding a cause or nonprofit to follow and support. Lastly, we want you to know that you're not alone in your loneliness. In fact, this is one of the rare times in history that people all around the world, of all different cultures, languages, socioeconomic groups, are experiencing the same thing together. We have more great videos coming your way, so be sure to click subscribe. For more content and resources to stay happy, healthy, and connected, visit closersocialdistancing.com. Help us get the word out about combating loneliness. Share this video on your social media or with a friend who might be struggling. Vulnerability is the birthplace of love, belonging, joy, courage, empathy, accountability, and authenticity. If we want greater clarity in our purpose or deeper and more meaningful spiritual lives, vulnerability is the path. That's a quote from Brené Brown's TED Talk, Power of Vulnerability. 
It has been said that there are different types of vulnerability. Innate vulnerability is our ability to detect danger in life-threatening situations. It is hardwired into us and comes from our primal instincts. The other type is conscious vulnerability. This is a vulnerability we lean into and choose to engage in. Within this vulnerability, we see the potential dangers. We experience the fear, worry or anxiety that come with it, but we go for it. We make the connections, we let ourselves go. This is what we want to focus on today, connecting with that part of yourself. It is this part of our vulnerabilities which allow us to connect more deeply with people and build authentic and purer relationships. The actor entering the stage is vulnerable to teasing and ridicule, but look how energised they are. Look at everything else they experience in that moment. The person who says, I need some help, is at risk of rejection, but gains support, guidance and meaningful connection. So how can we look to be more vulnerable in our lives? Here are a few statements that crack open the beauty vulnerability can give us in everyday situations. It's from the Huffington Post. I was wrong. It's hard to say this at any time, but especially hard as a student or employee. We often fall prey to the myth that we are all mentally right. By owning up to our mistakes, we open ourselves up to learning from them. I don't know. Not knowing is itself uncomfortable. Confessing it to others is doubly so, but it is also one of the most liberating things we can embrace. When I admit that I don't know, I use up less energy in pretending to know and give myself more space to learn. I'm sorry. Whether intentionally or unintentionally, our actions can be hurtful to others. By apologising, I'm building a protective bridge of empathy and a possibility for a greater and truer connection to others. Thank you. In giving thanks and daily gratitude, we display more confidence and less insecurity when we graciously acknowledge what we have received, making us aware of the abundance of gifts we continually receive from our surroundings. I love. To express love means to expose your whole self and to have it re rejected can be painful but love can become a gateway to recognizing parts of ourselves that we didn't know existed and to become more aware of our own emotions and those of others being vulnerable can potentially lead to being taken advantage of by others similarly being vulnerable in a way that is unkind to ourselves is counterproductive we have to remember the importance of self-care be part of something bigger than yourself being part of something bigger than yourself can also help you to make a connection. Some of the organisations that you could get involved with are Mind Crisis Cafe, Northamptonshire Volunteers, Food Banks, The Samaritans, Age UK, Shout, Lowdown, Service 6, Animal Shelters. There are also volunteering opportunities on doit.org. You could donate to a charity, volunteer directly with a cause that's important to you, or do some fundraising. We have put together a downloadable resource pack for you that includes all this information. Before we end, we think it's important to recognise and take time to acknowledge just how hard things are at the moment. We are all struggling in different ways, missing our families and friends, craving physical contact, suffering financially. It's really tough. We hope that this video helps you to see that you are not alone in this and that there are ways to combat our darker days during this period. We also hope that you see that feelings of isolation and loneliness are actually quite common. You may have been experiencing these way before our current lockdown restrictions. Understanding more about yourself, opening up to the possibility of being vulnerable and creating connections really does help in the defence against isolation and loneliness. Good luck to you all from all of us here at NHFT Recovery College.